Tell we no grief for anybody. Tell we no grief for anybody. Tell we no grief for anybody. It's your boy right here on the wheels of steel. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Welcome over again to the wonderful viewers and my wonderful community. I'm sure from what you can clearly see now, I'm actually trying to go out. I'm actually on my way out, and my car engine refused to start. Guess what? Somebody has a problem, and I really need to solve it right now. If not, my car will not start. So I have to be here to address the problem, as urgent as it is. Guess what? It exactly is the problem. It's a common problem that virtually most DJ face. Here is it. Please demonstrate your mixing technique and how you set your hot cues. So, it's hot cues. Wow. Let's get into the business of the day to see exactly how I set my hot cues and how I do my mixing technique. Actually, the real thing there is most of us complicate issues as DJs most of the time. We fail to pay key attention to the basics of mixing and we want to move into the advanced stage without really understanding the basics. Failure to understand these basics is a major reason why we struggle most of the time. You see, you sometimes you get to a certain stage, you get stuck. Yes, if you understand the basics, you understand that the entire concept of DJing is about putting tiny pieces together. These tiny pieces ranges from your hot cues, your mixing, your finger drumming. How all these tiny, tiny pieces are the things that really make DJ mixing sweet. That is why it's very difficult to have an AI that will do the job perfectly the way you as an human being will do it. Because your job is not just playing on the controller, you are actually connecting with the audience. So to connect the audience, you must get these things done at the appropriate time. While you are doing it, you are raising their expectation, you are raising their curiosity, you are raising their fun. So that is why putting all these individual pieces together is very, very important. For my own case, I've actually invested time to make sure I get the perfect mapping for my keyboard, especially for those who are using the keyboard. I know most people are conversant with the controller. I'm not so much into the controller of a team in this video aspect because the controller aspect is manually. But in this case, you are dealing with a keyboard setting that you need to understand the language of the software before you can program it to do exactly what you want. So it's when you're able to do it that way that you'll be able to have your perfect arrangement of what you want will make sure that everything you are typing here is actually what is being executed on the machine just like if i give you a command please get me a cup of water when you get there so you actually get me a cup of water when you get there but when i say when you get there get me a cup of water maybe virtually the same thing but you have to be careful how you arrange it during the mapping so the mapping is already there get it and you are good to go but let's address what exactly is the problem now most of the time when you want to transition your hot cues really really matters a lot you see how i flip from the first track to the second track without any problem so how for you to get this perfect hot cue you must be able to count beats let's look at the screen right now pay careful attention to what i'm going to be showing you look at my mouse if you look at this top red line you see how the red line is moving this first point is the first point of the beat that is where you set your hot cue you see it once it gets to this very stage, that is where you set your hot cue. I'm going to show you on the waveform. I'm going to stop the song so that you get to see what I'm talking about. Let me stop the song. I've stopped it. Let's go to the waveform. I'll switch it to scratch. You see the scratch. Let me remove the the loop. I've removed the loop. You can see. See where I set the hot cue. You can see this very tip. The very tip. That white part. That is the start of the heat. So this is the very point. Let me zoom it. Let me reduce it so that I get to see. So these are the individual beats. And how do we arrive at this individual beat? You must first need to think as a producer because when producers are producing tracks, sometimes they think of they think of what the DJs will do with it. That is why they have a certain arrangement or how they design every track. That is why the intro is usually giving the instrumental. So that we give you to 
it will give you room to fuse in the outgoing song into the incoming song. Those things are deliberately calculated. So if you look at it, you can see the very point where I placed it. If I shift it, you can see, look at this red point, you can see this is the exact point of the starting. That is where I said the hot cue. That means it is exactly on the hot cue. You can see, let me zoom it again for you to see. You can see it's exactly on the hot cue. That is why this red point is here. So you have to pay key attention. How and you must be able to count this bit. And in counting this bit, how do you do it? I'm going to open FS Studio and I'm going to show you something now. If I set this loop point now, you see it's telling me eight, and it's going to count about eight bit to get to this very stage. Look at it. This very point is the eight bit based on how the device count it. How does this device count it? This is this. This is it from FS Studio. From FS Studio, you see there are lines here some boxes here these are bit rack they call it bit rack you can see four pieces here another set of four another set of four another set of four so this first point is the first bit the second one follows the third one follows that means i'm placing them on the ones but if i decide to do it on the reverse order like this it means i'm placing it on the two on the fourth bit that is it this is it for oh this is sorry this is it for you can see the shaded color this is four and then this is the fourth one and then this is the fourth one this is this is the fourth one so you can see they are actually on the fourth now so let me remove the let me show you the bit you can see it's on 130 i'm going to bring it down to 120 let's get to see it i'll bring it down to 120 so this is it I'm going to press play. You pay attention. You hear the way the sound will be. It's going to be continuing. I'm I'll return it to the one so that you get to hear it. Return it to one. Return it to one. So the first shaded one. So I'm going to play it now. Let me select the sound. So you can see how the counting is done. Boom, boom, boom. So that is how the device does the counting. If I should take it back to four, that means I cannot set this sound. I'm going to pick a different sound to be the first on the beat whenever it's being produced. For, but in this case, I can actually pick this very sound as the first part of the beat. So I need to automatically flow. That means there are four here. This is one, two, three, four. That means this is one bar. So these four pieces makes up one bar. Exactly four. Another set of four again makes up the second bar continuously, continuously, continuously. That is how the entire process is being done. So if I drag it to this very point, you see it here. So you see, this four bits makes up one bar. This means this very first bar. If I should add another one again, this is the second bar. If I add again, this is the fourth bar. That is how the song is being. And most of the time when they design this thing, they stop it at this very fit point. So automatically there are four individual bars here. Hope I'm not complicating it. So most of the time when they design it, this very first part makes up the intro of the song. Or sometimes up to this very point, this first point, this it, which is the end of this it, makes up the first intro of the song. At every point from here to this very point or from here to this very point, something changes in the song. So when you understand this concept as a DJ, it helps you to become a much more better DJ than the conventional DJ that is just struggling with scratching of songs and just doing things randomly. I hope this video really helped. Don't worry, with time I will be explaining, I will be putting in more things that will really help you guys. Let's get to see. We'll be doing a little demonstration at the end of this video so that you get to appreciate what I'm talking about. So back to the virtual DJ as I showed you earlier. So you will notice that the, those colors I'm showing you, if I should compress that sound into audio and I load it here, you will see you will be having the same arrangement on this very point that is having this red and blue line that you are seeing. So that is how those the, we arrive at those individual bar that you are seeing so in this case we have four bars here we have one bar we have two bar we have three bar we have four bar that is why if you do the calculation times two you will see that it is exactly on eight that means automatically the eight bit 
So that is how we arrive at this very arrangement that the device does the counting. So as a DJ, you must learn how to do this counting very well. That will help you on how you do the scratches and how you do your drops and how you do your other things. Let's get over to the song now. You get to appreciate what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to be dropping Ruga on it. You just watch and take note of what I'm doing now. You get to appreciate what how you do this transitioning. And transitioning really matters a lot when you are mixing a song. It helps to connect, to bring a connect between the outgoing song and the incoming song. Let's get to see it now. So you see, I was able to scratch out the outgoing song very easy. All these things are already on the mapping. I use the letter U with a backward scratch. That is it. So that is how you build all these things after a period of time. Then you become perfect in it. You must appreciate the fact that the scratches, forward and backward scratches, you must perfect them before you think of any complexity. How you set your cue point, you must perfect it before you think of playing around with this starting of the song and stopping of the song whether you are using the hot cue start or the stutter play start or the normal play start or the whatsoever kind of start you are thinking of whether you are using the crossfader start all these things are very very important try to understand them practice practice is the major thing everything you see me do here they are practice there are things i've done over years through practice so if you are just coming across the channel today please don't forget to keep it there, subscribe as I continue to give, bring you more information and more entertainment. You can see how I'm switching with my mic on, bringing down the volume. All everything I'm doing here is already there on this YouTube channel. Please go through the channel. You'll be really happy that you get you there are a lot of valuable information there for you to pick from. And if you really need some extra features, I have an online store where you can just log in at your own time get what you want get to interact and get feedback from me if you do if it is something that need modification i'll really work on it thank you once again for being there for those who are not dj i'm sure you get to appreciate what djs do most of the time and i'm sure you get to bring in your own appreciation of the entire work of djs thank you once again for being there and i'm sure at this very point i can confidently start my car and go out for the Wow, my car is ready now. Let's move.